Hello there! In this tutorial we're going to have a look at mastering the basics of paint.net. For the purpose of this tutorial we're going to be using the picture of Donald Trump. Yes, believe it or not. I originally was going to use a giraffe but I ended up with Donald Trump. So if someone really doesn't like him or really does like him, one way or the other you're going to be enjoying his handsome face throughout this tutorial. Hopefully they won't upset anyone. So the first thing we're going to need is paint.net, otherwise it'll be quite difficult. So if you open up your browser and go to getpaint.net it will take you to this page and up here you have a download link, just click that one. And once you download it, you just click on the icon down here, it will probably pop up and then install it and just follow instructions and you should have your program installed. The next essential thing we're going to need is the picture of Donald Trump. So if you haven't already downloaded one or one of the giraffe, make sure to do that. Once you've downloaded it, you'll be able to right click it and then you can open with down here and then you can choose paint.net. There you are. just choose that one and you should get it up here like that. One of the first things that's going to get your attention in here besides Donald Trump's face is this little palette down here. So this is going to allow you to choose your colors and you notice there's two different colors here. We now got a cyany light blue color here and a white so you can flick between these two so this is your first and your secondary color. So I can choose like that and then I can flick it around there and then you can then choose the other color and that comes in handy later on when we start working with brushes and so on. You can also click the more button here and we get your RGB, your red, green and blue and then you got your hex color down here if you're doing anything on your website or something like that they will come back relevant to use the hex color and you can then move it around here and choose your colors and then we got alpha down here and the HSV here. So play around with that. Important little thing to note here is if you by accident hit this button here or for some reason want to close it you might have lost the however it's up here just up in the corner here, if you just click that little icon there, you'll get it back. And similar with the other ones here, if we have a window docked, we can click them on and off up here. So that's how you toggle those. I'll just click those off there again. Over here to the right, we also got a panel called Layers. That Layers you can think of as a stack of papers. Whatever is going to be on top in the stack is what's going to be shown to you. So if I, for example, can create a new layer, say, imagine it to be a new piece of paper, and I put this underneath this one, it will not be showing up. However, if I put it on top of it, this is what's going to be showing. Currently, we don't have anything on it, but if I was to choose something up here from the menu and just start, I take a pencil and start drawing on here, you notice that it shows up. However, if I move it underneath here, it will disappear. So if I was to cut something out of this layer, like if I was to erase something from it, what would happen is the same thing that would happen with a piece of paper. If you remove something, whatever is underneath it, this is what's going to shine through. So you can see the little line down there as we got underneath. Underneath here, we got a few buttons. That way we create a new layer. This one, we delete the layer. Make sure you select the right one if you want to delete it. This button here can make a duplicate of it. So we can make a duplicate of that one and it will appear that one and so on, and these buttons will basically move up and down. Now if I hold my control key down and hit set, I'm going to be able to just undo these changes because I'm not interested in them, so I'm just going to do it like that. And I'll now remove those changes and we're back to this picture of Donald Trump. And as you see, you can delete the layer down there. Now, we also got a panel up here called History, and as you may have worked out, this is what we have done previously, so we can click these off, and we can go back in our history. So for example, I can go back to that stage and we now get a layers back. So if you made a change and you're going to revert to it, you can do it up here. Those done with, let's move on to the tools themselves. So you have access to the tools over here, but you can also click the button up here, little hammer there, and you've got the tools expanded there. So our first tool is the rectangular selection tool. So that's that one. And surprisingly enough, for selection, the shortcut is S. So if you hit your S key on your keyboard, you'll be able to rotate between the selection tools. So you see if I do this, I can move around like that. And that's the different selection tools. A way for, to remember your shortcuts is sort of associated with something you do regularly or something you are familiar with. So for example, I really like snacks and I spend a lot of time selecting my snacks. So what will I do? Well, S for snacks. For example, that way I can remember that is how I select things. Now, what a rectangular selection tool does is, is allow us to define an arrow we want to be working with. So by creating this rectangular shape here, I've now selected his hand and I can then transform it in certain ways. I can either sque squeeze it or 
skew it or I can stretch it and so on. I can also like take my paint brushes and paint in this area or erase in it area without affecting things outside it. So let's just demonstrate this by moving this selection. And we notice over here we only got one layer, but if you have several layers, make sure you select the right layer you want to move the item on. So how do we move? Well, you might have guessed it already. We want the move tool and that is this one right here. And the shortcut for that one will be well, probably M. So if you click M, you click that. So what we see here is a bunch of anchor points around our selection and that allows us to select them and we can then shrink and stretch it depending on how we what we ever want to do with it. So in this case I really don't want him to be pointing that far up. So I can then pull it down like that. And you also see you have these arrows pointing in different direction if you hover over the middle here. By holding your key down you can move it around as well, hence the move tool. I think which would be quite convenient would be able to select the selection and move it around without actually affecting the image itself. So how do you do that? Well, logging off, there is actually a tool for it and it's on the M again. So if you press M, then you will see it pop down to this one over here. And now we can move our selection around without affecting the image in the back. And to complement our rectangular selection tool, we also got an eclipse tool to select with. So that would be a circle. So I can now draw a circle around here and you do that by holding your key down and that way we we'll make a selection here. The next tool up is your magnifying glass and that will allow us to zoom in and out. So you can click like that. That's how you zoom in and out. You have also have access to it down here. You can move him forward and back. But you can use the zoom tool to zoom in on specific things. And to get a picture up to 100% again, there's a little button down here next to the magnifying glass. If you click that, it gets a picture out there again. And back to 100% here. So our next little tool over here is our magic wand. And it is quite awesome. It's going to allow us to choose a certain color and get a selection based on that. So for example, I'm interested in his suit. I can click on the suit and then I can use the tolerance up here to reduce how greedy it is. So I could do it like that. Oh, almost, almost. Okay, we got a little bit there, but that, that's pretty all right, actually. It's not that bad. By holding your control key down, we can then click over there and get a bit more of that. Next to magic wand here, we got the pan tool, like that. And what that does, it will do nothing really other than just move the, the picture around here. So you can zoom in and you can move around like that with using the pan tool. So hooray, that's very interesting. And then we've got the paint bucket over here and you can remember that as F for full for tipping the paint over or also you can remember it as fill. So if you click that one, you will have a tolerance up here and by clicking it here, we can now paint his shirt, green here in this case, and you can then move your tolerance just to get it out a bit. Oh, and you can click over here and we now change the color of his shirt. And of course we got a beloved gradient tool over here and that will shortcut will of course be G for gradient. The way the gradient tool works is like it's the transition between two colors and you can choose which sort of transition you should be. So we got a spiral up here and we got like a smooth transition from one color to the other or we got in the middle and so on. So you need to choose two color. You've got your primary color here and your secondary color. For example, I want green and then I want it to be uh, maybe a yellow down here, just like that. I can then, I'm gonna end up in orange there, and I can then hold the key down and I can then draw the shape out like that by holding the key down. And you will notice this little anchor point we can then grab and just do the final touches to how we want our gradient to be. So I can also choose again down here and I can then change it around depending on how I want it. We also got control over how the gradient repeats itself. So if I just change the color here, if I just click the orange there and I will change that to a pink. So in a repeat up here, I can then choose repeat reflected and we will get something like this. Then we will go from one color here and then go over to the blue. All right, Donald's it back for good or worse here, but we got a next tool and that is the brush and the shortcut for that will of course be B. So the brush is going to have a size. So up here we can determine what size our brush is going to be. So we have 250 there. And the hardness is basically determining will the edges of the brush going to be smooth or firm. So if I do it like this, you get a something like looking a bit like this, like a smooth edge. However, if I turn it up, I will get a firm edge like this. So if I just remove that, we're just going to show you the fill and that's the same for your 
uh, paint bucket as well. So you can then choose what sort of fill it should be. Will it just be solid or will we gonna make a mix between the two colors in a diagonal grid here? Something like that. The next contestant here is a rubber or an eraser tool. So you click that, you'll be able to erase the part of the picture like that. And that is again working on the brush size as well. So we can move that down if we want to raise a small bit. You will notice that we get these small squares behind it and that is because we don't have a picture behind it. So if did that and I then use the fill tool like that, we now have this background. The bits have been moved here with our eraser tool. And the shortcut for this will obviously be E for eraser. Next up we got our pencil tool and you can probably work out the shortcut for that but please just forget it because it's an utterly useless tool. It's basically just going to draw a line and the same can be achieved with your brush tool. So let's forget about that one. The next tool here, however, that is useful is our color picker. And the shortcut for that is K for kangaroo, because that makes so much sense. So you work out what you want that to be, but it is K. So you can then click around your picture and you will get a color. If you click more here, you will then get the information about what color that is. So that comes in very useful. And finally, we have a ride at the clone tool, which is going to provide you with a lot of entertainment. If you haven't tried it yet, it's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to clone something. And the shortcut for that is L. So if you, for example, think that Donald Trump does not have enough mouth on him, you can hold your control key down and click there. Then you will make a little circle there. Now we're going to be cloning from there. So you let go of your control key again, and then we can start drawing down here. And we now give him a double mouth. We also have a recoloring tool down here and the shortcut for that is R and that's going to allow us to recolor Donald's shirt here. So down here we have the primary color and the secondary color. If you use your left key on the mouse, it's going to use the primary color. If you use your right key on the mouse, it's going to use the secondary color, which is red in this case. So for example, if I hold down the left here, I'm going to be able to paint Donald's shirt here blue. And in the other side, to make it more American, I hold the right key down and I get a red shirt on the side there. So that's your recoloring tool. And obviously you can fiddle around with it up here to just change the tolerance a bit of it. Just to get it to fit exactly where you want it to recolor. And then we also got a text tool and that's going to allow us to do some text. And that will of course be T for text. So if I just put it over there and drag it out, I can then type Trump here. Like that. And I currently you notice that it's blue because we have a primary color down here set to blue. So if you just flick that around, we get red text here. Up here is our font we're gonna use. So you can go through your fonts and you can install new fonts or whatever you want. And you can change your font and you have your font size here, just to make that big bigger, and then got bold, italic, and underline, and uh, strike through. And then we've got a line tool over here, which is O. And we basically going to be able to draw a line like this and it's going to have some anchor points where we can basically turn it around a bit like how we want it to be. We also got the ints we can change here. So if we want an error on it and we got the size and so on that we can change on it like that. And the last tool in the toolbox is shapes. And that's going to allow us to draw different shapes. So you click up there, you can then choose whatever shape you want. For example, I want to create some lightning bolt and I want to change it to yellow. Uh, and I can now draw a lightning bolt like that. In order to save a fabulous project, we can go up to file here and we can say save as. We can also create a new project and edit here. We can undo the thing or we can redo the thing and we can basically work with the selections there as well. Over here we have our zoom and the grid and you can for example see your rulers if you're working by a specific measurements and you can change those measurements to inches or centimeters depending on what you want. That's your rulers up there or you can create the grid. Up here on the image, we can then work with our selection. We can drop it or we can resize our image here or we can resize the canvas. So the canvas, for example, can be expanded. So we have more workspace without affecting the image itself. And then we can flip it and then we can rotate it and so on. On the layers, we can create new layers. We can duplicate them in similar fashion as we can over here. On the adjustments, now it starts getting interesting. We have uh, our order levels. You can play with that one. You've got black and white settings, so you can adjust the black and white values, or you've got the brightness and the contrast, and you've got the curves, so this is the RGB colors, or you've got your hues in the images, or you've got your inverted colors, so we can change the colors around like this, 
a very useful one you probably use quite a lot is your levels and that gives you full control over the values in your picture for example i can change the colors like slightly here and you see i'm making it brighter but if i wanted it to be a bit change the middle tones a bit more in the image i can pull that down there in the output so play around with it to get the tones right if we want to create a new picture we can also just go down here and click that and you have that style there so if i go back here the last thing we have over here is our effects and that's quite a few ones and you can start playing around with that so it's basically going to give us different sort of effects like that i'm not going to go over them all but you can play around with them and it's sort of a similar concept as photoshop you have a lot of different filters you can put on some of them are going to be more useful and that's your blurs so you might want to blur a certain part of the picture say we want to blur everything out for example or you want to create a selection and you can blur that out like that or you can also do it by selecting a certain layer so we also got styles down here and we can for example outline that and we got this sort of effect so i'll let you go over the effects yourself all right guys so this is everything for this tutorial on photo editing with paint.net i know we went over this up here in the top a bit quickly but the tutorial was getting a bit long but hopefully i have taken you from novice to master if you did enjoy this video don't forget to subscribe and like the video and i will see you in the next one